Good evening, everyone. My name is Reverend Thomas Bowen, and I'm the director of the Mayor's Office of Religious Affairs. And I wanna thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us for what we believe be something beneficial to all those who are joining us on this evening. FEMA's COVID-19 Funeral Assistance Program offers assistance to those families who have tragically lost loved ones due to COVID-19. Tragically, in the District of Columbia, 1,141 district residents have lost their lives. Nationwide, 604,311 have lost their lives due to COVID. On behalf of Mayor Muriel Bowser, the Mayor of the District of Columbia, I want everyone to know that you are in our prayers and our actions. And we just hope we hope that you will be comforted. In my tradition, we like to believe that they who mourn will be comforted. And for all those who join us coming from the many walks of life, may you be lifted, supported, and comforted by that which gives you strength. At this time, let us observe a moment of silence for the 604,311 residents of the United States who lost their lives due to COVID. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, the director of the DC Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency, which we refer to as HSEMA, the director, Dr. Christopher Rodriguez. Thank you, Reverend Bowen. Appreciate um, your words, as well as uh, our agency's continued partnership with the Mayor's Office of Religious Affairs. I wanna reiterate what, um, what Reverend Bowen said in expressing our deepest condolences on behalf of Mayor Bowser to all those lives lost uh, here in the district. Now, under the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2021 and the American uh, Rescue Plan Act of 2021, FEMA is providing financial assistance for COVID-19 related funeral expenses incurred after January 20th, 2020. And we have work to do to amplify this reimbursement program to impact uh, that have impacted districts loved ones. And we need your help in sharing this important information in our community. Uh, Mayor Bowser wants to make sure that every family impacted by a COVID-19 death knows that there's financial support available. And this reimbursement program can help ease some of the financial stress and burden caused by COVID-19. And we appreciate the support tonight from FEMA's individual assistance program experts, particularly uh, John Donahue, who you'll hear from in a second. John will walk, walk you through the application process uh, and, and share some of, the, um, some of the information about the program. And while the individual assistance team cannot answer specific questions, they will speak broadly about the program and offer guidance on the application process. So with that, I'll turn it over to John Donahue from FEMA. Thank you. Um, you know, as part of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, uh, you know, we also would like to extend our um, uh, our heartfelt condolences to all the families that were lost. You know, most of us know somebody um, that has been lost or has been affected by this uh, this event. So uh, we want to acknowledge that on our end as well. So thank you for having us here today. Um, our plan is to go over um go over the funeral assistance program and try to show you how easy it is to to go through um we'll spend a little time trying to explain a little bit about what some of the features are um and um you know kind of go through the website a little bit and, and go through that process so again my name is john donahue i work out of fema region three office in philadelphia um and we we normally work with disasters on um, floodings and hurricanes and, and things like that, but um, funeral assistance does fall under one of the programs in individual assistance um, called other needs assistance. So uh, that's kind of why we're here today and uh, uh, we're going through the individual assistance part of this. So 
I would like to go over some of the, the stats with everybody and, and give everybody an idea kind of where we are nationwide and, and where we are um, with, uh, with DC. So as of yesterday, when I pulled some of the numbers, um, you know, we have our telephone lines that, that people can call um, and we'll show that here for you uh, later on. We've had over 811,000 people that have called our funeral assistance line um, since April 12th uh, when it was activated. Um, yeah, you know, we get about 50, 51,000 calls a week. Um, and we have right now, we have 230,000 registrations uh, for funeral assistance nationwide. And we have uh, approved over 482 million. So what does that mean for DC? So DC breaks down to, um, there's about 646 registrations um, for funeral assistance. And we've already awarded over $1.3 million um, to, uh, to some of those folks that have lost loved ones. Um, right now, there are about 45% of the people um, who did pass away um, that did apply with us so far that has uh, you know, been approved for payment. So we're looking for your help to try to get the word out to everybody to apply for assistance um, so we can get as much help as, as possible to each individual. So I'd like to go through some slides. Next slide. So, you know, as I said before, FEMA assistance started um, due from January 20th, 2020, and moving forward. Uh, there is no end date right now. It is still continuing. Um, eligible funeral expenses have to be incurred. So if you do have out-of-pocket expenses, um, it is funded 100% federally uh, under this program. All you need to do is apply and go through the process. It's not very long. Um, and as was mentioned earlier, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, that's always hard to say, of 2021, and the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 are the funding authorities um, that this falls under. Next slide. So one of the most asked questions is, um, does the applicant need to be a U.S. citizen. Um, so the person who is applying for the loved one that has passed away must be a U.S. citizen, non-citizen national, or qualified alien. Um, but the decedent, the person who passed away, um, does not have to be a U.S. citizen, non-citizen national, or qualified alien. So there, that's pretty much the big difference. So if you are applying for somebody and you have out-of-pocket expenses um, for the, the funeral services, um, you can definitely um, give us a call and, and, and start the registration process. Um, the fatalities must have to have happened after the January 20, 2020 date um, and not covered by any other insurances or anything else. Um, we consider that a duplication of benefits. Um, a lot of the things that I see are people have uh, funeral uh, burial expenses. So if you have specific insurances for burial expenses, um, that would uh, be a duplication of benefits. Um, but we would want you actually to make sure you apply and go through that process and, and let the, the system work its way out and make sure um, at least you're in there and you get the, the right, um, right eligibility determination. So the death had to have occurred in the United States um, we are not able to take any of the registrations or uh, approve anything for um, our loved ones who have passed away outside of the United States or any of its territories, um, including the District of Columbia. Um, and, you know, we can only have one registration per, per decedent, per person who passed away. So we, I know oftentimes when we're working with some of the, the billing um, some of the funeral arrangements, there's multiple parties involved, different family members are involved, um, but only one family member um, that is responsible for the, the billing and the funeral um, expenses uh, would need to apply. It would be considered a duplication and it'll duplicate with the, with the other applications. Next slide. 
Okay, so actually just um, today, um, there was a change in um, how we were doing the funeral assistance. Um, in the past, we were making sure that all of the death certificates um, must have said um, or be attributed to COVID-19. Um, we have um, relaxed that a little bit um, and a change in policy was put in. So any certificate that does not attribute to the cause of death to COVID-19 um, could be accompanied by a signed statement from, um, from the person who signs the death certificates like a coroner um, you know, or, or some sort of person who does that. They're different in every state. And the statement must be provided by um, you know, the original certifier of that, the, like I said, the medical examiner, the coroner, and so on. And it must, ex must explain on that, uh, on that letter um, the path and how it got to COVID-19, how it was linked to COVID-19 in some way. Um, this will save um, some of the work that was being done previously on trying to get the death certificates amended. Um, but again, it would only be for those from January 20th, 2020, to May 16, 2020. Any fatalities, any um, deaths that happen after that, you would need to have on the death certificate, it would need to say something relating to COVID-19. Next slide. <clears throat> so what is included in the documentation? Of course, you need the, the applicant's name, uh, you know, the responsible party for the expenses, any of the total amount of funeral expenses, any out-of-pocket expenses that, that came about, uh, the decedent's name, and any of the dates the, of the funeral expenses that were incurred. And the, there could be many of those in, in different timeframes. Um, make sure you indicate your proof of insurance or other funeral benefits, um, any funeral proceeds or any forms of assistance that came from, him, from any parties, um, any life insurance that we stated earlier, um, a lot of times we may have some veterans that have, uh, you know, burial assistance for veterans, um, things like that. And we just want to make sure that they're not considered vacation. And just remember life insurance proceeds um, are, are not considered a duplication. Next slide. So this kind of shows you how to apply, uh, where to go. Um, unfortunately, we are not able to uh, apply online. Um, you know, we did that on purpose. We wanted to have that face or that that contact um, with the people. Um, so you have to call the 844 number. It's a toll free number 844-684-6333. And they are open Monday through Friday, uh, 9am to 9pm Eastern time. And there are uh, different languages available any services that um, so you can talk back and forth with the uh, helpline representative, um, but it is not the normal FEMA helpline number. So it's a specific number just for a funeral assistance. Next slide. Okay, so you know once you go through the process, um, if you're approved, you submit all your documentation, you go through all that. Um, it does take a little bit of time, um, it, but in a regular disaster, when we have the unfortunate um, funeral case that, that we have to process, we do them as, as well during disasters. Um, in the past, it has taken over six months in order to get all the documents together, go through this process, you know, and get a re resolution back and forth. You know, a lot of times the people are waiting for the death certificates, death certificates to come in um, and they're waiting for some of that information. It just takes some time. Um, since we started in, in April, uh, April 12th, um, we've gotten that down roughly to around 30 to 45 days. Um, as long as you have all the information in, they can do all that processing and try to help you through that, that unfortunate uh, uh, event that's happening. So please be patient with them. Um, they're trying their best to, to get everything through, but it, it does take a little bit of time. And, you know, you can receive funds normally by direct deposit is the easiest way to do it. Um, we do it that way during disasters as well. You have to give your bank routing numbers um, and you know somewhere where they can send the, uh, the funds uh, once it's awarded. But if you want to check by mail, we can also do that. Um, so just let them know when you apply. Next slide. 
Okay, so appealing an, an eligibility decision, there's lots of different ways um, that a person could be ineligible. Um, two of the most common reasons that I hear are due to insurance because they have, um, they already have insurance for some other, from some other source. Um, and it, it's also paid by another source. So insurance and being paid by another source are usually the two reasons for an ineligibility decision. A lot of the times that you get some correspondence from us is just asking for additional information. Um, it's not necessarily an, an, an eligibility letter, um, but it's saying, hey, you know, we can't read your documents or you know, there are some other documents that we need that you didn't provide us or we can't, you know, get a hold of the uh, the folks to va validate some of the information that you gave. So look at the, the letters um, closely and, um, you know, follow what it says and get it back to them as soon as, as, soon as you can. Um, make sure that you have any information. Uh, if you do want to appeal any of the decisions, um, you know, you put your full name, uh, the FEMA application number that they give you, um, disaster number uh, is important because <clears throat> there's like 56 states and territories that um, are incorporating doing this program. Um, so they wanna know where it goes and where to look for you in the system uh, and where to put your documents. And an explanation on why you think the, um, the decision was incorrect by FEMA. Um, any supporting documentation that you may have with that that uh, was missing, and of course, uh, the applicant's signature. Now, the quickest way to do that is to um, make a application um, over the phone and then go through disasterassistance.gov to create an account. Um, you can upload all your documents there. Um, that's the best way to go about doing that. It makes sure that they're all clear. It goes to the right place. It's not, um, you know, not something that's not readable. Um, and our helpline um, representatives are there to help you do that and create that account. So they can definitely do that. One of the other um, inability, in, uh, ineligibility decisions would be um, maybe you thought that the funding wasn't enough. So I can tell you the, the maximum that a person can get per decedent per person who passed away um, would be up to $9,000. And you know, hopefully that's enough to cover um, the majority of the, of the bills. Um, it is an, kind of an average throughout the United States. It's not going to cover everything for everybody. Um, but it was decided that $9,000 would be that, that limit. So, and that's per decedent, per person who passed. Um, if you have multiple people that you're responsible for, um, you can do up to $35,500. Um, and that would be roughly, you know, four people uh, in the same family. I have not seen that that high in, in any of our states that I've been looking at. <clears throat> but uh, I do see one or two um, is the normal. So just know that, that those are our limits, 9,000 per decedent and a total max for all people in the same household or whoever's taking care of that would be $35,500. Okay, next slide. Okay, so <clears throat> that was some of the basic information um, what I'd like to do now is I would like to go to the FEMA website and let me just share my screen here. Share my sound. Okay. Can uh, somebody just let me know if they can see that screen? Yes, I can see it. John. Okay, thank you. All right. So if you wanted to go for information um, and look around, try to get the information that you need, try to get a, a ahead of, um, you know, going through the process of applying for assistance, um, you can come to the FEMA.gov website, and this would be it. You'd show here, and <clears throat> there are different languages. There's about 12 different languages that you can um, go through and, uh, and look and see what is needed. Um, but first, I would really like to 
go through. Where is that video? All right. I want to go through a video with you real quick. I'm not going to show all of it. I just wanted to give you an idea of, of the videos here. Please look at it, go through it. It really tells you everything that you need to know and, and, and how you need to apply and, and what documents you need. So I'm going to play this for a few seconds. At FEMA, we understand responding to and recovering from disasters. It's what we do. The federally declared disaster due to the COVID-19 pandemic is no exception. The pandemic has affected all of us in some way. Many are grieving the loss of someone in their life because of COVID-19. And although we cannot change the outcome of what has happened, we are dedicated to helping ease some of the financial stress and burden created by this deadly virus. We want you to know we are here. The coronavirus. So no, I think I disconnected. So that was pretty much the video. Let me go back here. Um, it really does a nice job with going through um, everything that's needed. Supplemental appropriation. As soon as I get off this thing. Just bear with me one second. Okay. Um, so how do you apply for assistance? It brings you here. It goes through some of the stuff I already talked with you about, who cannot apply. Um, it goes through some of the limitations there, foreign students, temporary work visa holders. Um, can I apply online? No, unfortunately, you cannot. Um, we set it up to, to work one-on-one. -on -one. Um, anything that you need to fax, you can upload your documents or fax it old school um, into a fax number, or you can actually mail it to us um, at our location in, in Maryland. Um, and it just goes through some of the, the basic uh, things that are needed, uh, what expenses are covered, uh, funeral services, cremations, um, some markers or headstones that may be needed, caskets or urns, things like that. Um, it will give you an idea of, um, you know, who can apply on the behalf of the funeral home. Um, if someone else helped pay for the funeral expenses, um, can they help <clears throat> with it? Um, we would only be able to do one application for it. So you would have to work with that person and, and combine it under one application. Um, and all the insurance proceeds, uh, I said the life insurance and the insurance is our number one question that I get. Um, and uh, life insurance is not considered duplication. And I talked about the being outside the United States. So it does go through you know, a lot of that. Um, next I'll go to the um, documentations. Um, beware of scams. That was a, a big thing, making sure that you're, um, you know, doing it the right way. Don't disclose any information, um, you know, such, such as name and birth date, social security, unless we're, you know, going through it with you. Um, you know, when you're calling us on the phone, we'll need some of that, but um, we normally don't ask that otherwise. So that is some of the information that we have here. Um, it's very simple, um, tells you a little bit about the, the history of everything. And there's a time period. Um, there is no time period at this time. It does mention the $35,500 per house of limit. Um, so we don't have to worry about running out of money, but we, we do want people to apply and get in the system and get all the documents that are needed. So, that is there. Let me stop there. So you get kind of an idea of, of what's needed. Um, you know, one of the things I, I wanted to, to make point of is, you know, the life insurance and burial insurance are the, are the questions I get. So uh, many feel that they would not be eligible, um, but FEMA does consider that a duplication of benefits and make sure that you apply and, and let the system work out. Uh, when sending the documents into us, make sure you create that account. It's very easy to do. Um, our FEMA helpline will definitely help you with that. 
Um, make sure if you do send any items, you have all the names and uh, you know numbers on them and make sure that they're legible. Sometimes we get documents and we just can't read them. So that will generate a letter back to you that will take a little bit more time and uh, you'll just have to send us back a, a clear copy or upload it through the, through the system. And we also need an itemized um, invoice or statement of expenses. So, you know, we want to get that all, all in one sheet so we know what's there um, and then we can kind of go through and break down, uh, you know, when we're trying to go through the application and, and send it for award. Uh, make sure all the dates and everything are on there. John, we have two questions. Yes, sir. Uh, the first question, um, should an individual create an account or call a rep first? And the second is, um, does or would the funeral have had to occur in the United States? So the, the, the death would have to have occurred in the United States. Um, if the funeral is outside of the United States, that's something that you're going to have to call the uh, the helpline and determine, you know, where that is. But I think they're just basing it off of the fatality location. It has to be in the footprint of the United States. And I'm sorry, what was the first question? Um, should they create an account or call a representative first? Um, I would go through the website if they have access to that. Make sure they have all their documents ready um, and then call the uh, the toll-free number and then they'll set up the application with you there okay um, and we also just want to make sure um, we try and get the word out to apply um, you know that's the main thing get into the system if you have out-of-pocket expenses you know that's what our our push is make sure you go through that process, get in the system. Even if it takes a while, it, it will, you'll already be in there and you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, but um, make sure you have all the documents and um, you know, you can send everything in all at once is preferable instead of trying to send them in piece by piece. Um, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer that way. Um, and they make sure they have everything in the checklist and in the itemized uh, statements. Um, Another question. Yes, Another sir. question is, what are the hours operation for the helpline? Hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, Monday through Friday, Eastern time. And as a reminder um, for D.C. residents, if you or a neighbor don't have access to Internet, um, then we suggest, recommend um, that you utilize the wonderful resources at the D.C. Public Library, which have computers available for the residents of Washington, D.C. Not sure if we have any additional questions. If you're participating mm -hmm. and you have a question, um, please place your question into the chat space. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I just wanted to mention is make sure that um, you know everybody is doing a really good job getting their vaccines and continue to do that. And uh, we'll be through this hopefully sooner than later. Thank you, John. And um, the question comes, how long does the process usually take? So the process has been taking, once you have all the documents in place, and once you have all the documents into us, um, it's taking about 35 to 40 days, roughly, um, in order to get a determination and to see any funding that would show up in your bank account if you did automatic um, deposits. Maybe a little longer if it's a check. It takes a little longer to go through the mail if it's a check. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And is there a cutoff date to apply? At this time, there is no cutoff date. Um, they have not implemented any dates to, um, to end this. Um, I'm sure once we get to that point, um, they will start advertising that more and more. Um, so the public will know it'll go through the news and you know all the normal channels. But as of right now, it, it's open. Uh, so that's why we're encouraging everybody to apply. Well, thank you. I want to thank you and all the work um, that you are, are doing along with your, the other partners there in, in Region uh, 3, the best region in the country. 
um, want to thank you um, for taking the time to participate. And, and we hope that, that those who have joined us on this evening find the information to be quite helpful. I know that I did, and I was uh, busily uh, taking um, down notes. Um, if you have additional questions after this, you can call the helpline. Um, if my office, Office of Religious Affairs, can be of assistance to you, then please reach out um, to, to me um, at 202-664-6608, 202-664-6608, or via email at religious.affairs at dc.gov. And once again, we want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank FEMA um, for their assistance. We want to thank the Director Rodriguez um, for his all his work he's done um, during uh, the pandemic. Um, and we just um, can continue to, to press home that which Mr. Donahue has stated and that which we heard the mayor um, say over and over again that we will get through this. We'll get through this together. Thanks, everyone.